Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, I'm your host, B-Rex, and today we're going to be talking about some pretty big gaming news, uh, coming out of the gaming sphere. Um, if you haven't heard the news, um, or rather the rumors, it's not really news at this point, because it's not official, but apparently Xbox is planning on putting more of their games onto different platforms. So, let's get into it. Now, a little bit of history about myself as a gamer, you know, I've practically been all over the spectrum with gaming. I've owned at least one console from every brand. I started out with the PS2, moved on to the Wii, then the Xbox One, and then the Series S, then got into PC gaming, so now I just have a PC, PS5, and Switch. My PS5 and Switch are mainly for games that I want to own a physical copy of, or ones that I just don't want to play on PC. Like, for example, anything that isn't on Steam, but like might be on the Epic Game Store or something. I refuse to use the Epic Game Store based off principle, which is why I have a PS5 for any games that might be Epic Originals or something like that. Either way, basically, Xbox has decided to, well, it's claimed, they have decided to put Hi-Fi Rush and another game that we'll talk about in a few moments on Nintendo Switch and possibly PlayStation. So, Basically, this comes from a guy named Nate the Hate, who apparently has a strong track record when it comes to this information. He said on his podcast that an Xbox first-party title will come to a competitor in 2024. But this isn't just any old Xbox first-party title. This is a high critical acclaim Xbox first-party title. Well, let's just do some simple um, thinking, and let's figure out what that's going to be. Well, it's clearly not Redfall, because no one liked it. Um, it's clearly not Starfield, because he says in another post that it was also going in the Game of the Year conversation. Starfield was never in the Game of the Year conversation. Um, so, that kind of rules Starfield out. Also, Xbox really has gassed up the fact that Starfield is an exclusive, so I highly doubt they would put it on another platform. Because, I mean, why would they? I mean, <laughs> that that's practically just a slap in the face to people who invested in the Xbox solely because Starfield. And, you know, we have other games, too, that we can look at, but the two most likely suspects in my mind are Hi-Fi Rush and Psychonauts 2. Back when Hi-Fi Rush came out in January, I was, in 2023, I was initially skeptical about it, because I was like, eh, this looks kind of cringe and stuff, and I played it, I played about four hours, and was like, eh, I'm not a big fan of it, let's just leave it. Well, I came back to it in December, and finished it up over my Christmas break, and I actually really enjoyed it. Um, I felt like I wrote it off a little too fast. It's not one of those games where it's like, you know, oh, you have to play for X amount of hours and then it gets good. It's good from the beginning. It just it started to feel repetitive to me. But then I just learned to turn my brain off while playing it and not think about it because it's just one of those mindless fun games like Call of Duty. You know, if I spend there, if I sit there like a critic nitpicking everything about Call of Duty, I'm not going to have fun. So that's what I decided to do. I decided to turn off my critique brain and said, you know what, let's just play the game, have some fun with it. So I really enjoyed it. Um, one of my favorites from last year. And so, but I had initially wrote off the people saying, oh, it's a game of the year contender, because nothing else had come out when it was out. The only other game out was Forspoken. And, like, come on, I mean, it's Forspoken. Like, yeah, uh, Hi-Fi Rush is going to win game of the year over Forspoken any day of the week. But let's just be real. But we also had the Dead Space remake coming out around that time, which was exceptionally good. Absolutely loved it. And, you know, people initially called it, you know, Game of the Year. And I was like, well, let's let's kind of hold our horses on that. But I could see why it was in the conversation for it, and I think it was well-deserved um, to be in there. And But another game is Psychonauts 2, which came out in 2021 and is already available on PlayStation platforms, and so a simple Switch port honestly doesn't seem out of the cards, in my opinion, because the game can definitely run on the Switch. Um, it's no more, you know, uh, intensive than, you know, Mario Wonder or Tears of the Kingdom, so I think they could get it to run on Switch, and who knows, it could just be that Psychonauts 2 is coming to Switch. Like, that wouldn't surprise me at all. And then all this hoopla over this is just completely, you know, asinine. It doesn't even matter. Well, that's Hi-Fi Rush and possibly Psychonauts 2 out of the way. I do kind of think Hi-Fi Rush will get ported since it's a newer game. And, you know, the hype for Psychonauts... Hi-Fi Rush definitely hit more of a mainstream audience than Psychonauts 2 did. I don't even think Psychonauts 2 managed to break 1 million players. I can't remember if they announced player numbers for it. But I don't... I think it was a commercial disappointment. 
Um, but, other, but Hi-Fi Rush, who like got 2 million players in the first month, but they still haven't announced numbers for it uh, since. Now let's take a look at this article from Windows Central where they're talking about, you know, reiterating, hey, Hi-Fi Rush is probably coming to Switch. Well, now um, Jeff Grubb and Steven Totillo, I hope I'm saying that right, have claimed that Sea of Thieves might be coming to PlayStation. Now, this doesn't surprise me either. Sea of Thieves is a live service game that, and, you know, it has a big multiplayer focus. I don't think multiplayer games should be restricted to one platform. You know, you need the largest possible audience for a healthy ecosystem on multiplayer. So, sure, go ahead. Put Sea of Thieves on PlayStation. I don't think it'll make its way to Switch simply because I don't think the Switch could handle it since it's a shared world game. And the game takes up 40 gigs on Xbox and then like 100 on PC. It's a really big game. So I highly doubt it's going to hit Switch. Maybe the next Nintendo system, if it's powerful enough, it could possibly go to. But as for now, let's just assume that Hi-Fi Rush will be going to Switch and then see if these is coming to PlayStation. So I've seen a lot of people talking about, well, why do this when, you know, Sony was doing all this stuff to block the Activision merger, you know, last year. And I'm going to tell you this, and company companies rarely will hold grudges against each other unless it's like they're continuously trying to sabotage each other's businesses. And that's just cutthroat competition. Like everyone understands, if you come into the world of business, it's a dog eat dog world. You know, you have to win to survive. And so, you know, what is Xbox doing? Well, basically what they're going to do is Game Pass is not sustainable on its own. It can't, once you reach the same amount of user, once you reach a certain amount of users on console, I mean, you're limited by how many consoles you sell. So they tried, you know, branching out with PC gaming. PC gamers are pretty entrenched. I mean, I for one am a new PC gamer, and I rarely use anything other than Steam to play PC games, simply because it's the best store in my opinion. Well, okay, well, let's say we've reached all the maximum people on PC, now we need to expand to something else, like, you know, cloud gaming. They did cloud gaming, but cloud gaming is still relatively new. Their cloud service is still in beta, and so, you know, people, not everyone has the internet connection to play cloud games. So, what do they do after that? Well, it's like, okay, we might be making some money off of Game Pass. It might be profitable, and I say that in air quotes, but we want more money. It's like we want a bigger return on investment so we can do riskier stuff and, you know, not lose as much money. So what do they do? Put their games on other platforms. Because if you think about it this way, Game Pass isn't available on those other platforms. And I highly doubt Sea of Thieves or is going to go to Nintendo, is going to, not Nintendo, sorry. I, I highly doubt Sea of Thieves is going to hit PlayStation Plus. I, I just don't think it will. So what do they do? Microsoft sells it for 40 to $60 on PS5. Get maybe 1 million people to buy it, and boom, you've got 40 to $60 million right there that you're making an extra revenue. And this can allow them to, you know, maybe do some more stuff with Game Pass and Xbox stuff. You know, either way, it's something that people shouldn't be, it, there shouldn't be all this hoopla about it, because it's just, it's just games. You know, I, I see people saying, well, it makes my investment not worth it. I mean, if you're enjoying your game, then yeah, I mean, your investment's worth it. I don't think, you know, back when I had an Xbox during the days when they started experimenting with PC releases, I never, you know, was like, I, I never was like, what? How come the PC guys get to get it, get to get my games? I never thought that because it was just like, okay, whatever. I'm still playing the games on here. And I've never understood this notion that it's like, haha, you can't play this game. Well, what if it's a really good game? And maybe someone just doesn't want to buy a new system, or they just don't, you know, I mean, people don't want to buy something just to use it once. Like, you know, there were a certain number of games that were on my list for me to play on PlayStation before I even wanted to get one. And so, you know, it's like, as I'm gradually catching up to my back catalog, I'm getting my value out of the system despite, you know, 90% of my gaming coming from my PC. And so, I mean, even without my PC, I probably wouldn't have gotten a PlayStation, because that's how I played God of War and Horizon Zero Dawn, is I played them on here. And so, at the end of the day, this is all just getting console fanboys up and up, 
ruckus because they don't like the fact that someone else can play their games. And we saw it when Sony started porting games to PC, the meltdown that happened in the PlayStation community. Now we're seeing it happen out here. And another argument I've been seeing is people are like, well, Sony isn't, and Nintendo aren't giving anything back in return. And to that I say, well, they're not asking for the game. I haven't seen Sony or Nintendo out here like, hey, Microsoft, can we have your games too? A unless you like count Sony with Call of Duty, but that was mainly because they made a bunch of money off of Call of Duty. Other than Call of Duty, Sony really doesn't, Sony and Nintendo aren't asking for anything else. Nintendo doesn't need either of their games because I mean, they have their own exclusives that sell their system, which is why you buy a Nintendo system in the first place is for the exclusives. And same reason for the Sony consoles. You know, Xbox just kind of is here. You know, it's like, hey, we're a brand now that encompasses, you know, you can play on console, you can play on PC, you can play on your phone through cloud streaming. You can practically play anywhere you want. So how about we just open it up to more people? And Phil Spencer did come on record previously and say, hey, uh, we want to consider Nintendo and PlayStation gamers Xbox gamers as well, which I think is hinting at them putting more stuff on more platforms. Because the reality is, I mean, with prices being driven up by rampant inflation, you know, they're going to want to make, and budgets ballooning for these games that completely out of control, they're going to need more places to make a good return on investment. So that's all I can say to that. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below, and uh, have a good one.